most fundamental problems in education, lack of access to great teachers. And this problem six years ago, we decided we want to solve that. Let's build an ecosystem where we find this ideal teacher for every kid and let's start a business out of that. Our mission it is to connect a great teacher in, in a certain place with a, with a great student. I would like to welcome our listeners to our podcast series, iGlobe News Pods. The title of our podcast today is How a Vienna Startup is Revolutionizing E-Learning. Joining me today for our interview are two pioneers in the area of e-learning, the co-founders of GoStudent, Gregor Müller and Felix Oswald. Thank you, Gregor. Thank you, Felix, for being here today. Thank you for having us. Uh, nice to meet you, Diana. Excited what's going to come up. Excellent. Thank you very much. Go Student is a Vienna-based startup which hit the ground running. It was created in 2016 to revolutionize online learning and revolutionize it did. To set the stage, a few key indicators of your successful business. As of today, Go Student has over 400 plus employees, 3,000 plus tutors, 10,000 plus clients, and books over 350,000 classes each month. Very impressive indeed. iGlobe News and Go Students have something in common. We too are a Vienna based startup. We went online with our news platform in March 2021. I would like to invite all our listeners to visit our website at www.iglobenews.org. I am joined here by a fellow guest contributor to iGlobe News, Angela Dora Novi, who was instrumental in making this happen. Thank you, Angela Dora. Thank you, Diana. Thank you so much for yeah, organizing that. And thank you, Felix and Gregor, of course. Um, before we get started, let me briefly introduce Felix and Gregor to our listeners. Um, Felix is now CEO of GoStudent. In November 2020, Felix was included in Forbes's 30 Under 30 ranking. He was 21 when he started the platform with Gregor. Felix has an impressive academic record. He is a child mathematics prodigy. By age 14, he had already started his studies of mathematics at the University of Vienna and received his degree while others were still working on their high school diploma. He continued to study mathematics at Cambridge University. He also has a master's degree from the prestigious ETH in Zurich in the area of quantitative finance. Gregor, who is now chief operating officer of GoStudent, was only 23 when he founded GoStudent with Felix. He studied business management in St. Gallen and in the U.S. at San Diego State University in California. GoStudent is Gregor's second startup. Both Felix and Gregor are very sought after interview partners, and I'm very honored today that iGlobe News can exclusively present GoStudent and talk to both of its founders. Joining me from iGlobe News, as I already mentioned, is Angela Dora, and I'll now turn the floor over to her. Thank you, Diana, for this great introduction, and I'm glad to be here and to, of course, meet Gregor and Felix. So um, I would first like, would like to ask you what motivated you to start Go Student, and if there is, what is the philosophy behind Go Student? I can, I can start with, with answering that question. So the motivation already originated when we went to high school. We, I'm sure every, each and every one of the listeners still remember one or two really influential, really amazing, really inspiring teachers from, from his or her childhood. A teacher who has this ability teaching complex things in a very easy, understandable and applicable way. And we already at high school, while also tutoring ourselves, we discovered that's one of the biggest, most fundamental problems in education, lack of access to great teachers. And this problem six years ago, we decided we want to solve that. Let's build an ecosystem where we find this ideal teacher for every kid and let's start a business out of that. Okay. Sounds great. Please, Gregor. Yeah, and, and the first version of our product uh, was really not, nothing more than a phone number. Um, so we shared a phone number on Facebook and told school kids, yeah, just just send us your questions and, and we'll be there to help you. And we, we tried to really understand the struggles that the kids have uh, 
when they want to get help. So they need something which, which is easy, which is not, not complicated, and where they are not afraid to ask. Right. So and with this in this kind of chat format, uh, sending questions to people they even don't know, um, this helped them a lot to be honest about the challenges they are facing and, and the questions they have. Yeah. Um, it's e always difficult if you imagine you're in a classroom and you, you didn't understand something. And then it, the, the teacher asks you, ask the class, does everybody understand this? Usually everybody will say yes. And even the ones who didn't, they won't say anything because, of course, you're afraid to kind of ask questions because it shows yeah, that you didn't understand something and it, it shows that you are not on track some, somehow. And in our formats, yeah, kids were just asking freely and we could help them. And that's that's why it is spread really, really fast uh, across Vienna and Austria and even Germany. And at some point, we couldn't even answer all those questions anymore. <laughs> so we had to share them with our colleagues and, you, and the other university uh, students we knew. Um, to kind of help us answer all those questions and we had to distribute them and it was a bit of a yeah, it was annoying so we forwarded the questions we collected the answers we sent them back to the kid it took a lot of time this was kind of the problem we were facing at that time and we thought okay with a with an app uh, we can handle that in a better and more efficient way and people who want to give answers can select topics they want to help in and then we just forward the right questions to them automatically um, that was kind of what our first basic product, our mobile app, did. And um, please. So were both you and Felix then the original tutors for your new startup? You were the first tutors and you developed the system as you went along? Yes. Yes. Except for the technical development. For the technical development, we had a third person from the early beginning that helped us developing this uh, mobile application after we had this WhatsApp WhatsApp phase. But yes, uh, tutors answering the question, it was mainly us. Uh, but of course, we all have our limits. So when subjects came up that we weren't so keen of or not, not aware of everything, we had to get help. And that's why that's kind of the was the foundation of the our first inner circle of tutors and our the start of our tutor community all right and by now it's it's around 5000 tutors at that point it was us and a few a few friends that could help out in the topics that we uh, where we couldn't help okay thank you and uh, regarding the tutor community did you have any examples of uh, similar platforms that you that you studied Um, let's say there were a few like internet forums out there. Um, gute, in, in, in Germany, Austria says gutefrage.net. It's like goodquestion.net. And it has naturally a lot of questions around a lot of topics. But there was also a category with, uh, for school questions and homework questions. But well, it, was, it was a bit old school, right? It was kind of an old school internet page, not too much targeted towards kids. And you had to wait, wait a long time to get an answer. And often this answer didn't have the desired quality. Um, so this was kind of a, something you could compare with us, but in the end it was pretty, pretty different. Great. And um, what service uh, does Go Student provide and in which countries so far? Mm -hmm. So today we started with this Q&A homework chat and then over a period of three to three and a half years, the service developed further. And today, the core business that we have is one-on-one -on -one online teaching. So we connect one kid with one teacher in an online learning environment. And we sell them long-term memberships so that we can support the families and the teachers until that kid makes it out of school successfully. And that service we started, as mentioned in the beginning, we started it in the Dach region, so pr primarily Germany and Austria. And by mid of 2020, we have expanded the service to France, the UK, Spain, Italy, Greece, Turkey now as well, the Netherlands and Russia is going to start in a couple of weeks from now. So really the major European countries have already been covered by us. Do you franchise your your thoughts, your 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 system, or everything is organized by your Vienna base? 
No, everything everything is organized by us, right? So I think uh, we are keen on having the highest quality possible, and I think we we want to control things too much to give them out of hand and and, and franchise franchise have a franchise system. In the end, the cool thing about our product is that it's extremely scalable and it's content independent, right? So our mission. It is to connect a great teacher in, in a certain place with a, with a great student. And as long as the teacher is from that country or even better, maybe region and knows about the school system and the kid usually has clear things he needs to do for school, topics that will show up in the next exam, things he needs to know by end of the year. And kind of the kid brings the content to the, to the, to the classroom, to the, to the tutoring session. And for us, it's just important to facilitate everything around and make sure they ha- they stick to the frequency, they make progress, teachers get reports on what's happening, tutors are trained, tutors have a high quality, that's what we do. And this is the same in, uh, the same in all countries. And in the end, the way you look for a tutor, the things you expect from a tutor, it's pretty much the same no matter where you, where you are around the globe. Especially in Europe, that's, that's also extremely similar. So that's why we can, with one headquarter, expand into all the countries. We do it in 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 the in a way that the first initial team for a new country is also located in Vienna. So we look for native people here in Vienna to build the first small team of five six people that covers the most important parts. And as soon as we uh, get bigger, we open up an office in the in the respective country. And from that point on, most of the people are, are hired for there. And a few functions are always uh, central. So you have HR, marketing, the product, which is always central. And then you have the operate, the more operating teams you have in, in the locations. And uh, what would you say that make you, make you different from um, the competition, from other like tutoring um, startups? So on the service itself, I think it's three things. First and foremost, we specialize on -on one-on-one teaching. So a lot of the offline competitors, for example, they do small group classes, but one-on-one is the most effective form of teaching. And second point is we do it in an affordable way. So we are 30% cheaper than offline competitors and only slightly more expensive than what you find on the shadow market. And thirdly, we are extremely convenient and data-driven. So as a parent, you just need to lean back and you can observe how your kid becomes smarter uh, day by day. And also from the teacher's perspective, we unlock every teacher to fulfill their full potential and make sure that we also hire just the best teachers. So we have a 5% acceptance rate on the teacher side. So this is on the service, what differentiates us as Go Student versus other companies. And then on the team side, we as a company, Go Student, like, our mission is to build this number one global school. So we have this we have this global ambition. We have built an extraordinarily amazing team over the last years. And combined with an amazing team, this global ambition, and also the operational excellence that we have, have proven, we, we can definitely become the category leader in that field and, and beat the competition. When you say shadow market, what exactly do you mean by shadow market? In the shadow market, we mean kind of individual tutors that kind of could be the cousin or somebody in the neighborhood um, that is often not registered as as kind of business, but is helping out uh, kids, kind of the same person that maybe mows your lawn or does other stuff in the in the building. It depends on kind of the the market, but. Those are senior people that kind of help out with tutoring. Often you know them via your school or with word of mouth. Um, students that offer these services, like really individuals, no, no real companies. And in the end, we want to get them on our, on our platform and help them to, to become better teachers and even earn more money. So in the end, our goal is getting our main competition as tutors on our platform and showing them that this is a win-win situation. Because by using our tools, by us helping them get customers, retain customers, and taking care of all the administration around the tutoring process, in the end, they can focus on, on just on teaching. They have a better overview about their students and what they need. So their quality of their tutoring is higher. And at the same time, 
in the end, they even earn more money with less effort. Um, so our job is it to get more and more of these this, uh, tutors on our platform. And most of them are students, university students or retired teachers or even teachers themselves. Or, or, or yeah, even even high high school kids uh, that get wanna get earn some extra money. Um, those are the people that also offer their their services uh, in, in 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 the in the shadow market. And how do you ensure this like um, let's say like very good quality of the tutors and like overall was there like profile um, of the tutors? Do they have like a, a common like kind of profile? Are they university students are they like um young like what's their average age let's say so it's a it's a three-step application process the first step we check the subject skill set so if you apply in mathematics do you actually have the skill set in order to teach mathematics the second step is a pedagogical test where you need to explain a certain concept or a certain solution to a problem in a live setting to a group of people to see how can you present a topic, how do you explain that. And then the third step is a background check and onboarding, onboarding test on the platform. The typical profile of the student of the of the people of the of the teachers, they start while at university. They are often really smart university students since we only accept around five to seven percent and then our goal is to provide them with a career path so they start as virtual junior teachers but they can also climb up so they can become senior teachers they can earn more money the more sessions they do with their kids they can earn more money by managing other teachers that's the primary group that is currently teaching on the platform and on the other side, who, who uses your platform? Kids. <laughs> no, but um, it's a good question since, I mean, kids are the ones consuming our service and, and, and working with tutors. But in the end, our target group in a sense of whom do we sell our memberships to and whom do we uh, contact in the first place, uh, it's the parent usually. So it's parents looking for tutoring for their kids. Um they are in the end also the, the one, the decision maker. So we collect kind of their phone numbers, their contact details. So we have different websites, our main web, our main page, landing pages where people, they look for tutoring. Uh, we run advertisement or they have heard from us via somebody else. They go on our website and then they signed up for our service there. What's going to happen is we'll get in touch with them, try to understand the situation, try to understand preferences, uh, Try to understand the kid and, and what he wants and what the goals are. And based on that, we connect them with one of our tutors. They have a trial session together. They get to know each other. Um, they already start working on kind of a study plan together. And after this trial session, if everything worked out, they, they will uh, sign up for a membership with GoStudent. And we have different packages. So we are always focusing really on a long-term effect and not only help kids for the next exam but we want to make sure they actually excel in school so it's at least six to maximum 24 months that you can have for your initial contract and then depending on how much help you need it's four eight twelve or sixteen sessions per month um, mostly it starts with math um, so half to two-thirds of the requests are math but once we help them there and we build their trust they often start to use it for other subjects too and how do you get in touch with the students or with the parents? They leave their contact details. Um, they indicate they want us to call them. And then we have a team of educational experts internally that will, as soon as, uh, as soon as possible, call them, talk to them, take them by the hand, explain everything, and make sure from the first moment everything is, is, is individualized and, and very professional. Great. And regarding your working environment, how would you uh, describe it internally? I mean, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no. A, it's 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 a, it's also like a good question. So internally, for the employees we have at Go Student, for us it is extremely important as Go Student to build a company culture where, as 
for each and everyone who works who works here at Go Student that it actually makes fun and that it excites you and that you come with a big smile uh, to the to the office here. We have a hybrid model. You can also work from home if you want, of course. But I think we make it pretty hard for people to only want to work from home because here in the office, it's always a lot of fun, a lot of super ambitious, super motivated people. Uh, we look for the best ones. Uh, we want to build this number one global school. So having this mindset of always aiming for more, this is something we, and you will find in with, with each and everyone who works here. Yeah, totally true and so important. <laughs> so, and how did the COVID crisis impact your company and also eventually your employees? And this like very nice working em environment that you had just described. Um, so just maybe two, two comments on the, on the business side. On the business side, it has affected us both good and not so good. It has affected us good from the, from the teacher's perspective. Because of COVID, we have received significant more teacher applications who want to, who want to apply as tutors mm -hmm. because uh, offline jobs have been kind of a scarcity over the last uh, 12 months and, and working as an online teacher from your home suddenly became much more attractive than it has been before, before the pandemic. So we had like four to five times more applications on the teacher side than the months before. On the, on the customer side, on the family side, actually the demand for tutoring, the demand for private teaching decreased because of the school lockdowns there is less pressure at school, less exams, and therefore, in general, the search volume of people looking for private teacher also decreases. Nevertheless, we managed to, to, to grow the business by uh, more than eight times over the last 12 months, but this is something we, 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 we saw in the data. And on the other side, on the employee side, of course, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I think, hard on everyone uh, um, working from home all of the, all of the time. But uh, we always had from the, from the beginning of the pandemic and also before the pandemic, we have a hybrid model. So people who want to come to the office and we have enough space here, they can come to the office and they have like the distances to each other. Um, and the people who want to work from home, they can also freely do that. So no one is, is, is forced to come to the office. And this is, this is how we cope with the, with the situation. And regarding your marketing, um, your market strategy, how do you market your services? And do you think like there is like a very significant competition uh, or it's a good student, a new idea? Um, let me answer that question. I, I think I, maybe one, one, one difference that we didn't mention earlier, which, which kind of really sets us apart from the competition here in, in Europe, is that most companies that try to help you find a tutor, they think their work is done at the moment where they share kind of the contact details and connect you with a tutor and that they think that's it. Um, and it turned out that this is completely wrong. Um, that's why we start kind of our work starts when after the connection because there are so much more important things to look after that this is actually can be a successful partnership that we as GoStudent don't want to give them out of, our, out of our hands. And with this model, there's near to zero real competition that we see with a two similar model across Europe. Um, if you look into in India and China, um, there are models that you can compare. Uh, and they, we also sometimes they, they act as inspiration for us. Um, because they went into this whole topic and into our model a bit earlier than we are, uh, especially the digitalization topic and also really this close long-term working together with a private tutor after school. This is pr pretty common there. So there are models um, that we see as competition, but in the end, they are so much focused on their huge own markets that they have no kind of time or thought thoughts to move somewhere else. And Europe for them is also culturally pretty different and in the US there is also one or two bigger companies that, that started as offline uh, tutoring companies and moved more and more into a model that is comparable to ours um, but also there I think we're really the best in class 
um, currently when it comes to comes to online tutoring, and what and, and now also with the with the ne next funding round uh, that we ha had a few month, months ago, this gives us even more power to double down on our uh, competitive advantage. And how would you describe your sales strategy? We are definitely on the sales side pretty aggressive um, in terms of scaling the team and in terms of operational excellence. So once the requests come into the system, the sales team takes over and the core the core responsibility of the sales team is to understand where the families currently struggle. What is like the expectation of the family? Does the kid only have issues in mathematics? Is it maybe also in other subjects? Really understanding what are the issues or maybe what are the things that are already working well? We have, we have people who are actually overperformers at school and they look for teachers who bring them like to the next stage. So really understanding the situation and then combined with the right data that we have, identify the best teacher connected to and then sell them into a, a long-term long -term membership. So is it correct to say that one teacher does all the subjects or do you have more than one teacher doing various subjects? We have, so of course, it's, they, they start with one subject usually, sometimes two, and we try to cover it with one tutor. Um, kind of, this is also preferred often. But at the same time, if you want to try other subject or your initial tutor only only covers one subject, then you would move on to other tutors for other subjects. Um, so it really depends on what subject do you need, what subject does your first tutor offer, and what, what do you prefer. Um, but it's not limited to one tutor that only works with one kid and not, not the other way around. Um, so and within your package that you have, like the credits that you can use for booking tutors, um, that you get each and every month, you can use them for, for all tutors in all subjects. And even for things like intensive courses, coding classes, and other stuff like that, that we will focus more and more on as a, as a, as a kind of second, second product extension. Did, did you just mention before that you had a round of financing? Did I hear that correctly? That you just got more financing for your organization? Yes, we, 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 we closed a 70 million euros round with a New York fund called Coteau beginning of the year. And yeah, it will be mainly used for faster expansion, improving our product, making sure that kind of on the technical side, we are even more better, better than we are already now. And, and of course, yeah getting more and more great talent into our into our company and to, to be a great employer and to be even better in everything we do. Um, so for us, it's a big step. And it even, again, sets us more apart from the competition um, because in the end, you need to be fast. If you want to be fast, you need resources. You just mentioned expansion and we know that you're expanding so fast. What's your like um, expansion strategy? How do you analyze the market in other countries, for example? The, um, there are different factors that we consider. Um, I mean, our home market was uh, Austria, Germany, uh, which is already kind of one of the biggest markets. If you look at Germany and, 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 uh, and the spending for tutoring, what we look at is kind of, of course, competition, um, but that's across Europe, as mentioned, not too of a decisive factor because there isn't too much. Then we look at kind of how many people are right now already, what share of the of the of the population or of the kids have some extra tutors or so take some private tutoring. So for example, markets like Greece, the Greece, Greece market, Greek market, they have almost 90% of kids that have some sort of uh, extra teacher after school. Um, so those those this 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 thing is also a big uh, decision uh, factor for us. And then, of course, kind of what is the income level, the spending level? Um, also, what do, can we offer language-wise? Maybe do we have people in the company that could help us start into a new, new market since we are really international? And it's really a combination of things. And, of course, strategic, we want to cover the biggest markets. That's why 
after uh, Germany, we went to the French market and the UK market as, as next step because they are the, the three biggest in Europe and you want to just have a foot in, into those markets as soon as possible to also show investors this model works in different uh, cultural regions, in different languages, and we can really pull it off no matter where we go. How do you find your investors? They find us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe yeah, it's a, it's 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 um, it, it's actually kind of true. I mean, we already we have raised a couple of rounds before that round, and within that investor community, the funds look at each other. They want to explore okay, how are these certain companies performing, mm -hmm. and we we managed over the course of the last let's call it one and a half two years. We managed tremendous growth month over month. We managed to always hit the budget numbers. So all the numbers that we have communicated also externally, we managed to even over exceed these amounts. And we also managed to hire really great people in the, in the company. And the combination of these three things paired with a big market opportunity, this creates a lot of uh, investors in, investors interest. And are you thinking about going public in the near future? Yes, for sure, for sure. So going public in the long run is definitely the definitely the goal. Great. So you, and so you want to go public or will you sell to one of the big uh, social media groups, do you think? Or have they approached you? I mean, education, I think, is a pretty special industry because over the past like let's call it before 2019 there was not so much M&A activity going on in the education industry and for the really big education companies the main chance to build a truly huge business is, is to go public and it's also our ambition we 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 have we have too much skin in the game. We are working on that for the last six years. We want to build this number one global school and selling it to someone else. And, you know, you, you, you raise your child for six years. You don't want to give away your child then after maybe eight years. So you want to see how it grows and how it gets, how the kid gets bigger and stronger. And this is, this is how we think about it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the bigger you get and, and, and the more confident you are also about your company. And, and I think uh, that that's why we have kind of really the, the aspiration to, to go global and to, to stay a brand that is, uh, that is there to, to last. And as soon as you kind of go into two, uh, two close relationships with other companies and that they other interests, yeah, you, you kind of lo lose the influence on that. Um, maybe we'll buy up other companies. <laughs> um, that help us to build our mission. Um, so yeah, that's kind of you know the, the mentality we at least for now have. And going back to the expansion, how do you? Um, I mean, have you noticed any cultural differences depending on the countries you are expanding to, like uh, with regards to the um, to the tutors, to the clients, and to the um, employees? Mm. Yeah, like maybe less than we even expected. So it's not too different um, as mentioned earlier, but maybe if you ask me that way, we see, for example, in the French market, kind of this more long-term thinking about education. We see that reflecting in the duration of the initial membership that people purchase. Um, so we have there two, three months in average longer than in most other markets. Um, so this is definitely one thing, for example, in comparison to Spain, uh, where this is slightly shorter, or not slightly, quite a bit shorter. Um, other than that, maybe kind of how they want to deal with customer support, right? And do they want to have calls or emails or less or more contact? Are they more open to talk about things? Uh, I mean, a good example are kind of the Western European uh, countries, Spain, Italy, and so on. We, we feel a bit of a difference there. Uh, people expressing their feelings more openly and and like uh, things is it yeah they are either if they're happy they are very happy and if they're unhappy they're very unhappy and they tell that to us and the company and the tutor and and whomever and you have that maybe less in, in germany 
right? Um, but in the end, it's it's cliches, and for the for for the a single case, you can never really say okay, uh, he's he he's from French because he has this and that behavior. Um, on a tutor side, it's pretty pretty similar. Maybe in Spain, we have a bit higher, uh, easier time getting really great tutors because it's a bit uh, tougher w when it comes to the job situation mm -hmm. uh, in general. So. Um, our offer is even more attractive uh, for people there and for, for students than maybe in, in, in Germany, Austria. It depends also a bit on the social system, right? The more money and, and you get and, and, and during, during your studies or the less you pay for university, things like those make it more or less attractive to become a tutor on our platform. So you have those differences, but they are really culturally, they are more kind of from depending on the, on the government and the system. Yeah. And do you see expanding your business in other forms of uh, e-learning products, like webinars or like self-paced online courses and professional mm -hmm. skill set courses? No, that, that's a good question. At the moment, we are focused 100% on one-on-one -on -one teaching. So one kid, we pair with one teacher and we support them long term. But in the long run, there is a huge opportunity to, to add more verticals. For example, small group classes. So right now we have a call in a small group. So something like that can also be implemented on the, on the teaching side. Large group classes. In Asian countries, for example, you have classes where you have one teacher and thousands of kids. So also this concept is, is highly interesting. You can also offer financial educational services. When we create this loyalty on the family side, what about, you know, giving them the support to help them find the dream job for their kid after school and support them on their, on their future career path. So also joining the families until, until that kid uh, uh, actually gets to a job is also interesting. Adding the group of zero to six year old ones, also something that can be interesting. So I think bottom line is, as, as you probably hear from, from, from these ideas, we have now this strong focus on six to 19 year old kids with one-on-one -on -one teaching. But once that becomes bigger and bigger, you have limitless opportunities to go in all different directions and add different product extensions. And how would you define the number one global school? Go student. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's a, a fine, I think it's it's something we we as as go student really need to shape, yeah. Because like in the past, there has never been a truly global education company. The only global education companies that exist out there are school book publishers basically mm -hmm. there are like a couple of big publishers from the u.s for example mcgraw and hill pearson that manage to scale in multiple countries but with a pretty you know kind of boring product offline offline textbooks and in the online space that is not as as asset heavy as as the offline world no one really managed to scale globally so I think we are on a really good track because we managed to do that already in a couple of European countries. And if we take this step also outside of Europe, then we will, we will take a step closer to truly become this number one global school. What do you mean for outside of Europe? What's your, what's your plan? Maybe the, the, the question should be like, what countries are not interesting for you? And the two countries which are not interesting for us is uh, China on the one hand side and India on the other side. And there's a simple reason to that. In these two countries, you already find outstanding digital education players that have raised huge amounts of money. But since their countries are so big, these companies are 100%, 100% focused on that country. So it doesn't make too much sense to go there now and go into hard competition against existing players. That's why we look into the rest of the world. I know that in um, 
Japan and South Korea, for instance, it's part of the game for all students there that after their regular um, going to school, they go to these after school tutors, which are like second schools where they spend the mm -hmm. rest of the night um, studying with another teacher. How are you going to fit into those kinds of environments? They even have they even have three schools. They also have summer three schools. schools. Okay, Which yeah. You, I had a friend from Korea who lived here and he thought, ah, cool, now it's summer holidays, I'm going to visit my friends in Korea. Uh, and, and the first day there, he, all of them asked them, what, what are you doing? Uh, our summer school starts today. So the first <laughs> day normal school ends is the first day when summer school starts and it's even more competitive and, and takes more effort than a normal school, which, is, which kind of shows their focus on education. Mm -hmm. But as you can imagine, if a country has so much focus on education and is also digitally uh, kind of on the forefront, you have more and more models and more and more competitions and, and more and more players in the market that have has, have been doing doing things in that direction for, for a longer time. Um, that's why probably Asia and especially China, India, also J Japan and Korea, maybe less, less of a target for us. Um, mm -hmm. But there are other big countries um, – that are kind of Western oriented and maybe a bit slower to that respective is like the Philippines, Thailand, uh, also huge countries, also really moving forward, also a big willingness to uh, focus on education. Um, maybe those are the ones where we could, uh, if, if we if we talk Asia, uh, think about. What about US and Australia? Also uh, interesting. Also interesting. Um, Australia is a, is, a, is, a, is a market that is competitive on the educational side. So what I mean is, is uh, they, they have a competitive school system. Um, the US as well. They have uh, entrance exams to get into universities. There's not as much competition as in China or India, for example. So definitely also interesting. And considering your great achievements and your ambitious plans, what lessons can the industry, uh, industry and individuals uh, learn from your experience? Um, I think one thing, and it's it's pretty general and probably you, you hit it a lot, but it's like, don't, don't take no for an answer and, and don't listen too much to what others might uh, say or think, uh, especially the others where you shouldn't probably take advice from. Um, and it's kind of still sticks in your head what they say. Um, Felix and me try to really take those occasions as something that motivates us even more. And I think in the, in the beginning, you need, really need to like, take those things in and turn them into, into positive energy. And then it helps you to want to prove yourself and, and prove it to the world even more that you can build something great and that you have a good idea and are on the right track. Um, I think that's one thing that that's, if you think of uh, everybody has good ideas, but in the end, that's that's what matters. Uh, how much you are able to stay focused and don't don't let let you, uh, yeah, let yourself be distracted. Um, other than that, um, maybe yeah. maybe one 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 thing to add there is find also like the the the, the right people. Um, it's a bit like you know at school you sometimes have this situation that you have a group project and you need to work with other people at university as well, in, 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 in jobs as well. So you always have the situation, you need to work in a group of people. And um, if you want to grow fast as company and, and, and be, be strong and on, on top, you need to have the best people. And, and then not only the best people in their fields, but they also need to be able to work together. And they, they have synergies and that they are complementary to each other. And um, that's also a big part Gregor and myself nowadays spend time on doing hundreds of recruitment uh, calls to, to, to find people who are like-minded, who have experience, who maybe have no experience, but the right mindset, that's, that's extremely important. And so where do you, sorry, go ahead, Diana. Because you said um, you don't take no for an answer. So at the beginning, did some people say to you, this is not possible, you can forget it? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, 
you first i mean when you when you have an idea in your in your head and you want to solve a certain problem at the beginning everybody is a bit like you know risk averse they are like mm, do you really want to do that mm, try to land like a secure job and 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 go your way so it starts with kind of first feedback that you also receive just like you know privately and then later on especially in education there has never been in the past as as mentioned before a truly global digital education company so also the feedback we have received from investor side for the first years it was always negative always like you cannot build a multi billion dollar company in that ah oh, the market size is too small blah 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 all these things we we have heard it we've heard it hundred hundred and hundreds of times but we still believed in it and now we are the fastest growing and best funded digital education company in europe so we 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 truly believe in it and i think if you if you believe in something and uh, you, you, you then then you you can you can definitely do it mm -hmm. And of course, you have like Austria is a land of experts, right? So you you have <laughs> always experts knowing knowing everything, and and probably it's all around the world like that. You know, uh, they always have good, good, strong ideas and opinions, even about fields they have never been in touch with yet. Uh, <laughs> and of course, if you tell somebody starting a, a startup that that it, it will probably fail, they are statistically on the on a safe side. Which, which of course also gives them even more incentive to 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 go in that direction, right? Um, because probably they'll end up have, being have, being right. Um, <laughs> but that's why I mean, don't listen too much for that, right? And based on your experience, where do you see e-learning in ten years from now? And do you think will go students start an education or uh, education revolution, or has it started already? I think in order to truly revolutionize education, education can only be as good as the teachers. So you need to revolutionize the, the, the teacher side of in that industry. Because teaching is still something that requires some sort of life interactions. Teaching will, in the next 10 years, not be replaced by an AI robot. The AI robot will come into the game maybe in 50 years from now. But until then, you have the human, you have the human element. And it starts, you know, with your parents. When you grow up as a kid, who is your teacher? It's, you know, the parents that influence you and determine a lot of your characteristics, a lot of your behavior and shape the, how you, how you view the world. So, We want to play a big part in shaping how what what do we how do how do we get the best teachers? What is the profile best teachers need to bring on the table to truly influence the kids? And as a digital company, we can make it for the first time in history, we can make it measurable. So we can measure what makes a good teacher. Why is this teacher better than the other teacher? And I think using this know-how, using this, this information, you can apply it in schools also. And you can also get the best teachers into the classroom of each and every child. And if you, if you take that path, then, then you can revolutionize education for sure. All right. Thank you very much for this very interesting interview and for your inspiring idea. And I give the floor to Diana. Yes, I too would like to thank Gregor and Felix uh, for sharing um, their ideas, their thoughts, their hopes for the future. Um, also regarding e-learning in general, I think for our listeners, it will be very, very interesting to hear what you had to say. And um, we at iGlobe News wish Go Student all the best for the future. And we'll be watching you as you expand and grow and go public and uh, maybe participate uh, when you do your IPO and um, look forward to keeping in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of iGlobe News Pods. We were very glad that you listened to us. Um, our next iGlobe News Pods will be an interview with the 
Dean of the Austrian Anti-Corruption Academy, Dr. Thomas Seltzer. We look forward to welcome you again for that interview. Please don't forget to sign up for our newsletter and become part of our iGlobe News community. And we look forward to keeping in touch.